Alright everyone, hello and welcome to Let's Play Space Pirates and Zombies and Bounty Hunters and Lasers and Rockets and Collection and on and on and on. Um, so I haven't played this yet myself, although I did show it to my buddy Eric as he has been my go-to guy for anything uh, space recently, except for FTL. For whatever reason, that crazy man doesn't like FTL. I think he's nuts. I'm sure you guys all think he's nuts now, too. But that doesn't mean he doesn't have good opinions. He played this a little bit. He thought it was really cool. Uh, and I'm, I, I think that's, you know... I thought it looked cool, anyway. So, uh, let's jump on into it. What is this game? Um, obviously, it's kind of a... Uh, I don't know if it's really a Flash game. I can't tell anymore. But I'm sure it is a Flash game. But uh, basically, what it is, you create your ships. You find plans to... Uh, create new ships and different weapons and you upgrade your ships and then you go around and you shoot them. Uh, you can see this guy is using uh, mostly beams here. Beams are good at taking down shields uh, but then there's a pulse weapon which is good at taking down hull. When you kill an enemy you can pick up um, little pods that are eject pods. Uh, why would I not go up like max? Like craziness. I'm gonna go with default difficulty, default tech ability, I think. We're not gonna skip chapter one. Randomized tech progression. That could be interesting. Let's see. Increasing but balanced tech tree where level up when randomized, upgrade per level or dealt like cards from a deck. The higher levels being more likely to receive upgrade cards. This is a much more interesting tech progression where research choices become more strategic unbalanced experience, which I don't really want. So, generate again. Look at that sweet, goodness gracious, so many stars. Uh, so we're just going to jump right into it. Yeah. Well, eventually. Once it's done adding moods and hiding goodies. and We were talking about, um, I, what, what game came out with that first? Uh, it was like a, oh my goodness, I can't remember. Anyway. Uh, he was saying that it would be cool if they actually had reticulating swines like the uh, uh, originator of this. But I think these are actually referring to exactly what it's actually doing. So it says stirring up trouble, but it will always say stirring up trouble. So that must be, you know, placing, um, placing bad guys. You know, maybe loading the AI. <laughs> going on here to we crash that would be unfortunate well maybe I'll see you guys in a moment here just kidding space is a vast and desolate frontier covering a seemingly infinite distance even the speed of light is dwarfed by the unimaginable scale of our galaxy it took nearly 250 years to bridge the void between earth and its closest neighboring star Mankind had mastered the folding of space-time, but relied on the use of warp gates. Massive drone ships journeyed through deep space for centuries, deploying pairs of warp gates which allowed instantaneous travel between connections. Warp gate travel had not become commonplace until the discovery of a stable element, number 126. This element contained bizarre transmutable properties, allowing it to be reconfigured into different forms of matter. This made it the most valuable and sought-after commodity in the universe. Mankind quickly became completely dependent on element 126, which the first miners named Rez. Due to the increasing demand for Rez, the Warpgate network became privatized. Anyone with ample funding was able to deploy new and unregistered warp gates. Like a new gold rush, convoys of miners traversed the expanding warp network looking for Rez deposits. This drove them closer and closer to the galactic core, where res deposits became richer and richer. A growing number of isolated colonies became unmanageable. As the unique ecologies of each discovered planet intermixed through trade, potential pandemics became a concern. The United Terran Alliance was formed to control interplanetary contamination. They moved to heavily restrict gate access. Military blockades began to screen all trade ships traveling between gates, attacking any unregistered ships that attempted to use them. For a time, the UTA was able to maintain control, but they soon crumbled under the weight of rapid expansionism and bureaucracy. 
Unable to manage their fleets and borders, the military hierarchy collapsed. Without central leadership, the UTA fleets dissolved into a series of isolated subcells that rarely communicated or traveled beyond local space. Each military subcell now struggles to control their systems by whatever laws they see fit to implement. Despite the enforced isolation, rogues continue the gold rush while refugees amass hidden away from the UTA's eye. They survive within the vast junk fields of an abandoned Earth. There they build a massive flagship named the Clockwork. With it, they intend to travel to the galactic core in search of a legendary mother load of rares. Quite the story, huh? Pretty scary, honestly. Okay, folks, it's that time again. Uh, this will be our seventh engine test this week. I don't want to go to bed with radiation burns again tonight, alright? Let's get those puppies fired up good and proper this time. Yes, well, you see, you're, we're lucky the toilet's even flush on this brick. I've managed to bootstrap the induction coil to the main core to boost output, but I don't expect it to maintain a reliable reaction. Nuclear particle physics and duct tape don't mingle well, yes? That, that beard, man. That beard. Right there. Carl, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Just turn the bloody thing on. Turn it off! Turn it off! Turn, turn it off! Oh, see how the people dying? Damn, the magnetic stabilizer's blue. We have major breaches on deck 6 through 10. Our escort ships are gone and we're venting atmosphere. We have crew casualties. Oh, crewmen can always be replaced. The ship damage, on the other hand, well, I told you that piece of junk wouldn't hold back an overload. Did you want to expect any different? Look at what I have to work with here. The blown stabilizer system will have to be replaced before we can even think of trying this again. It's a common part. I'm sure there is another one in the junk field somewhere. We still have a working hangar, so let's fire up the fabricator systems and build a ship to retrieve it. Plus, space to build ship. Uh, ship log updated. Interesting. I understand. F3 for hangar. Empty hangar. Design ship. Current ship. What's this? The stored design buttons allow quick access to saved ship designs to handle different scenarios. Okay. Woo woo. So we have a small mining laser. The mining laser creates an oscillating beam, causing targets to vibrate violently, shaking them apart. Sustained contact from the oscillating beam will cause rock-like matter to weaken and fracture. It has almost no effect on energy shields or metallic plating. Therefore, no damage. And that's all she got. Oh, alright, fine, I'm sorry. Put that back on. Small tractor beam. Most ships can transport non-organic materials into the cargo hold at extremely short distances. Tractor beams are used to tow small objects into the trans into transport range. Desired surplus engine. You got anything about my engine? Surplus engine is a poor imitation of a modern ship. It is weak forward lateral and rear thrusters. The forward thrusters are slightly more powerful than the maneuvering thrusters. So I can go forward a little bit faster than I can turn and stuff. Surplus reactor uses last generation technology. It has lower out than average capacity and power output. The power output determines how quickly the capacitor is recharged. Weapons, fire, shields, and engines will consume capacitor something. Capacitor energy. And shield. The surplus surplus I can't say that word, man. The surplus shield is an outdated version of the standard shield. Shields are highly effective at deflecting projectiles and explosives. Explosions, however, they however are weak to beam technology. All shields require an undisrupted period of time in order to reestablish after a collapse. You can see down there in the bottom, strong versus projections and projectiles and explosions, weak versus beams. Take time to arrive. The space you wish to exit the hangar and view. The short bus. It, oh, I was looking at that. Is a tiny mining ship designed to break up small asteroids for processing. It has a little has little value in combat but it's almost non exist but it's almost non existent production cost make it a reliable fallback. No, I don't wanna I just go ahead and make it. Ship constructed. Is that here? 
Nope. W forward, S rear, A D side. Oh, for strafing. Okay. X stabilizers. Oh, for stopping. Yeah. Oh, that that's slow stabilization. That poor girl. Fetch the part. I sure hope you're paying attention. There what am I doing? After. Huh. Nearly everything of importance is marked with the radar, allowing you to see when it, it when it's off screen. Radar indicators will be pinned to the edge. So in the direction and orientation of ships. If you get confused as to what you should be doing, press F1. Just whatever menu you see will have a help indicator. Click the help indicators to find out useful information about what you're looking at. Oh, that's interesting. Beam doesn't work as long as I thought it would. I brought it! Well, that should fix the stabilizer, but the overload compromises the structural integrity of the ship more than I initially thought. We can't jump with a breach like this. I've written up an extensive list of the repairs that we'll, we'll, that we'll have to be satisfied before I conduct another test. Meanwhile, I'll be in my quarters. Let me know if you're done cleaning up your failure. Oh, you've got to be kidding. I really do hate that man. We're going to need to replace more than just one ship if we expect to cork that hole anytime soon. That's unfortunate. Lee, easier said than done. The whole damage vented most of our red supply. We even lost all the damn liquor. We need to restock before we can build more ships. There is a mission. There's a mining. There's, well, there could be a mission there, too. There's a mining station in the system. Elsa, you've worked with the miners before. See if you can convince them to let us harvest in their territory. Tur -tur. Oh. There it is. I'm coming. Contact the mining base. They're all drunk on industrial paint strippers, so it wasn't hard to convince them to let us harvest some res. We'll have to be very careful around here. The mining base is automated, and I and won't think twice about slicing us in half with that mining beam. Let's siphon what we can and move on. What we need to move on. Your prospecting request has been granted. Please refrain from tampering with the automated mining system. If you happen to... Ex be exposed to the vacuum of space, please proceed to the nearest eyewash sa station and rish rinse thoroughly. Goodness gracious. Thank you and have a pleasant day. This should be interesting. That asteroid they are drilling into is even more dense than you, Elsa. There's no way we can crack it. Only a station class core mining beam can even come close. We'll have to grab the spill off table scraps. I feel like such a transient. This is a public service announcement. 500, 100, 25, 5. One. Mother ship is too slow to scout for res on its own, so it deploys a short range warp beacon that you can transfer ships and res back and forth instantly. You can find res by destroying asteroids with weapons fire. Mouse one, fly over res to load it into the cargo hold, returns to the beacon uh, to automatically transfer back to the mother ship for processing. You can see your process res count in the upper left corner of your screen. Ugh, cargo. Oh, there's little dots there. Keep an eye on how much cargo uh, space your ships have. The more full the cargo bay, the slower the ship will go. Be aware that smaller ships can not carry large deposits of res. If you do not have a large enough ship, you can always break res apart with weapons fire. Oh. Apparently, one shot. Oof. That is. So, right is still to its right, and left is still to its left. Despite the fact that it's not my left and right. We're at 10 of 100. 
Nine of ten goons and zero of fifty data. Well, that was two. That's three. Four, five was right here. Seems to be a little bit laggy of some sort. Not oh, we didn't hit five, but we're very close, so I don't see any point in not dropping it off. I can zoom out, I think. Eighteen of a hundred. This is one slow slow game. So basically, the automated ships might oh, I didn't even I didn't even get it. Cargo full. So the giant ship over there is mining. I I'm just like stealing his leftovers. Enough for us to build an extra ship. Able to officially kick ass and salvage another hangar. Should be able to support two ships now. That being the good news, here's the bad news. Explosion all but wiped out our construction database, and nobody backed up their hard drive. Luckily, I was able to recover the data for a single small fighter ship called the Dart. I recommend we build a couple. Our current ships can't even cut butter, let alone stand up against any UTA ships. Well, finally some progress. Let's see to it that we collect what we need to build two darts. We're not leaving until we have some ships fit for combat. Hanger. From the hangar view, you can fully customize every aspect of your ship designs. By default, your ship will be outfitted with nothing but surplus components. Even early on, you'll have to access you'll have access to several different components. Click on the mount icons on the ship to see what else you can install. You can also modify shields, engines, and reactors, which powers everything in the ship. The more advanced the component, the more it will cost you. Be sure to refit your obsolete ships whenever you can whenever you unlock new sh uh, stuff. As your mothership becomes more advanced, additional hangars will be added. Old hangars will also be upgraded, allowing them to support larger ships. It's usually wise to build the largest ships available if you can afford them. I will bet it is. There's our new ship! Costs 10 res. He's got two small focal limiters. Long range focus crystal to amplify and direct electromagnetic radiation. It will deal direct damage to anything it comes in contact with, but does extra damage to the ionized shields from all modern ships. Weak versus armor. Good versus armor. Weak versus shield. Pulse cannon delivers a high yield, high yield linear charge. The charge requires a great deal of energy to fire, quickly depleting the capacitor. No, you you you're gonna be this. Ship constructed. Ship constructed. Well, there we go. Our fleet is slightly less pathetic now. We've got what we need. Now let's get the hell out of here. So y'all want to pick my stones and run off, eh? Well, you go right ahead there, Missy, but not without hearing me out first. Y'all... He does just look awful. Y'all help us kick those UTA boys in the jimmy, and me and the boys will fix up that big old ship you got floating around. What do you say? Suppose we can trust these people, provided you don't have any money in your pockets. I'm not sure we really have much of a choice. We're weeks away from repairing the clockwork without their help. We have a small and capable fleet now. Why not put it some I use? Sure hope you're there will be a quiz after. You are free to switch between all the ships you currently have in your hangar by pressing the number key associated with each hangar. Alternatively, you can cycle between all your ships, reactive ships, with the E or Q key. Any ship we're not currently directing will be controlled by crappy AI.
I'm gonna storage to pick up one of them. Black market account. Most star systems have weapon and blueprint components for sale. Some advanced blueprints come in particular. Oh, it come in many parts. Once you've purchased all of the parts for a particular blueprint, you will unlock a new component to use on your ships, providing your level is high enough. You can purchase blueprints by docking with either a civilian or UTA station. Each station will sell a unique set of items. Most stations will not deal with you if your relationship is too low, so be careful who you piss off. Current res. Standard reactor. Standard shield. I think I have an overload emitter. Can't afford it. Oh, gotta find blueprint parts. And possibly other things as well. Charge rate and max strength, all shields require. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, res cost. And blueprints. Wow. Wow, that ain't cheap. That ain't cheap. UTA have been confiscating the cargo from some of our mining ships and attempt to use it to establish a lookout post in the area. This is not good for business, obviously. We need to destroy their supplies and force them to restock elsewhere. Should not be hit with rocket. I think that got me like nothing. Let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I wanna grab a couple pieces of loot here. Whoa! Whoa! Missed it. Oh. Don't miss it, dude. You're my AI. Come drop this stuff off. Yeah, I know. Just want to drop off my stuff. It's not really worth much, is it? Come and get me through this. Come through there. Thank you. There we go. Uh, system map. Right there, I guess. Then we'll go back for mining later. Ah, fortune smiles. We're luckily... We're lucky there are no UTI ships here right now. They're probably off some robbing some other mining patrol. These fringe worlds are unmonitored, so the bastards just do as they damn well please. Let's loot the hell out of this place quickly before they come back. We'll need to keep an eye out what we're blasting too. Max sent us some backup, so don't be shooting at the green ships. Tackle systems are being repaired and are coming online now. We need to fire the system up make sure they aren't any crossed Maybe wires. From the tactics panel, you can complete there's a lot to read in this game. Complete you get a complete radar view of the field. Select ships with right click and issue attacks and move orders with left click and then and orders with right click. Got it. Slag, uh, you can drag and select multiple ships to give group orders. Customize various autopilot functions from the tactics panel. When you're not directly in control of your ships, the AI kicks in to navigate, fight, harvest res, and do basically everything a human pilot would at any time. You can see the state of your ships in the hangar by uh, view to the left side of the screen. You can select different ships by pressing the number key. I think we just, I think we literally just can prompt it to quickly build a new ship by pressing the number key of the hangar with no active ship. Destroy two a, uh, UTA storage crates. Uh, okay. You, you know, go, go kill that one up there. Like, kill it, dude. What is this? I don't know what that is. I want it. Is it goons? Is it data? Oh, that sweet, sweet baby, that's data.
I want that data. We've acquired enough data to start upgrading some of our ship systems. We don't have a lot of data, but we have enough to get a, a few critical systems up to par. We'll have to choose which upgrades we think are most important. We should take care of this right away. Let's get a leg up on our enemies. Earn levels up as you click up data pickups. Must be those blue things, obviously, there. The good ones. Well, not the good ones, <laughs> let's be honest. Data can be found in many places, most commonly from destroyed ships. Each time you gain a level, you receive upgrade points to spend. Push F4. Charge ship's capacitor. Without adequate capacitor power, weapons fire is slowed. Sustained thrust and shield regen will also inhibit the reactor's ability to recharge the capacitor. Okay. Beams instantly impact their targets. They are very easy to use and are great for taking down enemy shields. They do minimal damage to hull and armor. And what's it do? Oh. Base damage by 22%. That's actually kind of a big upgrade. Base damage by 17%. Well, you know what? Let's just pump everything up. Yes. When you finish upgrading your technology, some of your ships may become obsolete. You can upgrade these ships for free. Use the repair command from the tactics panel to send them back to the mothership for upgrade parts. Obsolete ships are automatically updated anytime you warp to a new location. I can upgrade it. Okay. I mean, I don't want to. But wait, what was that? Max speed of the bullet? Life. Oh, beam life and recharge. Oh, okay. Interesting. You know, when you're first starting out, I think it's best to just grab a little bit of everything. Recycle. Repair. Repair. Plus res. Oh. That's pretty epic. We got the res for that, too. I know it slows me down to have the res, but... Oh, um, let's... Go ahead, bud. UTA ships on radar. I was hoping we wouldn't, c they wouldn't come back so soon, but we're not that lucky, are we? This job just got a bit more complicated than kicking over a few boxes. We'll have to take them out. Check your damn targets too. This place is crawling with civilian ships, and the last thing we need right now is a three-way firefight. You know, a confrontation may not be a bad thing. If we destroy their ships, I can salvage most of their data and rebuild our database. We can then pick up the escape pods and force the willing to work on repair ships, ship repairs. We lost quite a few of those crewmen with the red shirts in the explosion. Maybe you should read this. Shields. Hull strength. Armor plates. Nice. Ship's crew. Keep an eye on the condition of your ship in the upper left corner. You can see how much armor hull strew other stuff. Green is healthy. Red means you are in trouble, yo. Oh my gosh. So much. Uh, target ship design. Target faction logo. Target faction relationship. You can push F and R to lock onto various non-allied targets to see a similar readout of their ship. Enemy readouts have indicators in which faction they belong to, as well as their faction relationship to you. Always check your targets. Don't accidentally fire upon friends. 
and fact reactor indicators. Watch your capacity capacitor level as it directly controls your ability to fire weapons, shields, cannons, lasers, launchers, weapon. Okay. All take power to operate. Even sustained thrust will slow your recharge rate. If you tap out your power supply, you'll be left defenseless until it, it can recharge. Make your shots count and fire in short bursts. Now that I have a choice. Guys, don't be in my way, okay? Oh, shield down, baby! Got him. Ooh, there's a human right there. I'm gonna go grab it. Hey man, please don't kill me. I was just following orders. I really don't even know why I'm out here. Well, I'm not going to kill you yet. Drones are expensive and the toilets are in need of scrubbing. Perhaps you can take a look at that crack in the reactor for me. Hell, you're going to eat turd sandwiches without the bread if I tell you to. You even look at me the wrong way, I'll toss your out ass out of an airlock. How are you back on the main ship already? That's all I want to know. Might have been a bit harsh. As awesome as I am at fixing your tin traps, I could really use the extra crew working repairs, so we should put anyone who is willing to use. The clockwork can also hold quite a few extra goons if we need to monitor keep manpower if we need to keep manpower in reserve. We don't really need to space everyone we come across. I do agree with you, somewhat. Let us not forget that these goons might be valuable if we pawn them off as workers. I'm sure there are many stations that are willing to pay for the extra manpower. This is a public service oh my gosh. Each ship hangar has a desired surplus crew count. Default 20%. This value can be changed in the hangar view. When a ship is created from that hangar, from that hangar, it draws upon the pool of excess goons to fill the desired crew count. As the goon pool drains, the ship may not be able to fully staff the desired count. Having lots of crew on board your ships has many advantages. Crew members can repair da damage hull and armor components. They can also fight off foreign invaders that find their way on board the ship. Interesting. Alternatively, goons that are not on board your ships can be sold for stuffs. You'll see escape pods. Those ones. Poor guy. Uh, being ejected from destroyed ships. Retrieve escape pods to recruit more crew members. Pods of an enemy faction may not accept their new life as a pirate. It will be frequently tossed out an air out the airlock. If the captured crewman accepts pirate life, the ship's crew count will increase. Low faction relations is not relations and high ship crew count will decrease conversion chance. That doesn't make any sense, really. <coughs> the guy either wants to join us or not, whether we have lots of people. The faction relations is fine. If a ship ends up with more crew than the desired crew count, the extra crewmen will be deposited in the pool of excess goons when the ship warps, refits, or goes back for repairs. I'm gonna grab that last guy. I think I can grab him. Oh goodness. I mean, you know, really? Blowing that guy up? Not necessary for me to do. Grab that. Got him. Y'all kick that UTA assholes. Kick them UTA. All right, all right. Now we went and figured some of our own folk gone and helped them UTA bastards. I hate to be shooting down my own boys, but Mama won't stand for it. Please go on and deal with them before they turn tail and run off. I've sent you one of them email thing. We still use emails in the future. Yeah, that seems unlikely. Them email things for your map. Y'all should maybe stop by my station before scooting off. That's some real turd you have hanging off your ships. Uh-huh. Mac and sells you some fine booty to place them rusty boomsticks you've been fine with. Thanks, Mac. Oh, oh gosh. That dude. That dude is not gonna go anywhere. Oh. 
Got it. Plus three. You are here. Okay, so that's something I did realize. You have some res, now spend it! Res can be used for more than just pumping out ships. You can use it to buy new weapons and components on the black market. Your ship will have a hard time getting anywhere in the galaxy without buying new gear. Black markets can easily be found at UTA and civilian ship stations. Explore often and keep an eye out for a vendor icon to see if a station has items for sale. You'll also need to watch the faction relation icon. If the stash, uh, station's faction like dislikes you, won't be able to buy from them. You know, find a way to make them happy, or you'll have to take what you can by force. Not recommended for rookies. So first, head back here and buy some stuff. Did not use my res on ship upgrades. Because I want to see what I can buy. I have lots of res and plenty of goons. Black market. So we could buy a standard reactor, which is useful, but I don't think it's that useful. And I, we already have an overload emitter, I think. I don't know why I'd want this. So we could buy. I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Why? Why does it have the ability to buy an overload emitter? Would we have one? Is ours a trashy overload emitter? Oh, small focal emitter. Okay. Okay. Okay, I get it. Low power use, slow damage, medium firing speed, long range, and long accuracy. What's what's this guy? Medium power use, higher than medium damage medium range so it doesn't isn't the range isn't as good firing speeds great what's it cost me one blueprint parts oh no um res 55 and that's gonna cost me 76 standard shield be nice though like really nice Oh, you have to have level 2 shields in order to use it. Okay, fine. Don't want it then. Gosh dang it. But I mean, I also gotta have uh, blueprint parts. Wait, no. It's just res cost. I don't know what I'm reading. I thought... See, it says blueprint parts remaining. I don't even see that. Oh, I guess they have... Blueprint parts remaining. I get it. To unlock a new ship device, you must purchase all the required blueprints. Once unlocked, it will show up in the hangar view component. Keep in mind that some components require that you upgrade your technology level in the research screen before you can use them. I guess I could have upgraded my stuff quick. Wasn't thinking now. Uh, hangar. F3. That one. And we'll Power usage is worse, range is worse, damage goes up. Refill co refit cost is not too bad. Uh, and then what? Oh, right, we want to upgrade. Where's my upgrade? Research! So we can get level 2 sh Oh wait, did it say level 2 shields and level 2 other thing was net, uh, netted? Netted. Yep, netted. Oh, where does it say? Level 2. It's not just level 1, which I can get, but level 2, which I can't get. Ow, that, that hit me, didn't it? I, I really hate I can't pick those up. It's that yellow one. That's massive, isn't it? Yeah. Can't grab that. Go get those. And then, I guess, we'll, uh... Yeah, 
I guess at this point we'll do our research. So, we don't have any launchers yet. Shield upgrade would be nice. And I could upgrade it to level 2, but I don't see the point since I don't have the res for it anymore. So we'll just upgrade everything a little bit, including launchers, I guess? I don't really see any big point in reason not to. Ah! That's not what I meant to do. So we got everything. Uh, and with that, I think... We'll, we'll, give, we'll give it just a little bit longer, but then I, then I gotta call it. I gotta go to work. <laughs> On a Saturday, all the way to... Whoa, whoa, star map. That's not what I want. I just want a system map, sir. Alright, bad seeds. I wish he'd die. Got him! Oh, when you destroy a ship, the black box will be left behind. Collect black boxes to reverse engineer that ship type. The larger ships will require more black boxes in order to successfully reverse. Makes sense. Oh, oh, and he grabs it. That's fantastic. Let's let our reactor power up a little bit there. Oh, I killed that guy. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. Don't go over there yet, bud. I need you. Oh, my gosh. Grab it. There we go. And I'll, I'll help you. We got to focus on that dude, okay? Okay, so apparently I did not need the range, because this seems to be doing fantastic. Is that his? It's possible. Come back for you, bud. That poor dude's going to be so sad when I get over there. Oh, shield's down already! Crew maxed. Come on. I'm not gonna lie, when Eric played this game, it looked extremely difficult. <laughs> I can't tell if that's just mean or true. A little bit of both. Low power. Poor guys. Can't get my stuff down. I could get new ships, but why would I? Look at this. Freaking destroying them. There's a mining vehicle. I don't know, but his life is going down, sucker. Maybe he played on hard. Oh, I bet my shield was down. I was like, why is my I gotta I gotta get that level two reactor. This is intensely difficult. Oh boy! You really know how to show a girl a good time. I hate to be the donkey's carrot here, mister. I don't understand what that means. But we still need some of that fine help you've been providing. 
them U a uh, yeah, it should be UAT. The two UTA is dumb. Bastards have come back looking for missing goons. I think we we I be thinking we waste them and eventually they stop coming around here. Roundies parch. Oh, do we have a new ship thing available? Change hull we got. Okay. Let's look at this guy. Basic fighter, two forward guns, but a fragile hull. High maneuverability. Okay. Okay. Low maneuverability. Big hull strength. And it's bigger, so it's easier to hit. The scout packs a punch considering its size. It has both forward mount, uh, weapon mount and a missile launcher. Unfortunately, the launcher is rear-mounted, making it somewhat tricky to use effectively. Well, especially since it has low maneuverability. What the heck? Grasshopper. Grasshopper is modified lifeboat. Training crew capacity for dual offset missile mounts. Ooh. Missile mounts. I could trade... I suppose I could trade this dude, who's got my shots, or something like that. Uh, what? Is he level... Oh, small hulls. Hatchet. The hatchet was originally a minor cargo hauler. It's quite heavy, but the hatchet's thick hull and huge cargo make uh, capacity make it both a great miner and a worthy combat vessel. Where are they? Small shooter mounts and one medium utility mount. Versus small launchers. One small shooter, one small launcher. Oh, yuck. Hmm. Intriguing. Oh, it's totally separate, so it doesn't even doesn't even count that one. Sure, we can grab that. What we got here? Utility. Medium tractor beam. Most ships can transport non-organic materials into the cargo hold at extremely short distances. Tractor beams are used to tow small objects into transport range. And then there is the medium surplus scanner. Scanners are used to sweep the surrounding area for cloaked ship or as devices. The scanner can create a brief disruption in a cloak field, allowing the ship's systems to gain a target lock. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, and you can have those or not. No, that's not what I... Ugh, I can't. I can't help you right now. Medium tractor beam. And I guess two of those. I think that sounds good. I don't think I'll be disappointed. It's not a launcher, but... You know, look, looks good. Medium armor plates. Tanky tanky. How is its maneuverability? Middling at best. Third. This is a lot. Let's not. Let's. Maybe you should read this. Oh, full launchers, empty launchers. Missiles and torpedoes are smart weapons. They will avoid things like media asteroids or other objects that do not have an electromagnetic center. You can fire missiles and torpedoes with default right. Mm -hmm mouse button you can change the control assignment in the advanced blah 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 blah. yeah let's do that what we got we got small micro missile which is low power low damage high range high peering spade high range, range, range. holy cow small surplus torpedo last generation low yield version of the modern torpedo it's space used by a missiles guidance system instead packed with explosives <laughs> I like it. Accuracy is uh, half as much, but the damage is extensive. I feel like maybe I should have one that's guaranteed to hit and one that's going to just do tons of damage. I mean, what if they move fast? Then I just won't be able to do any damage? I don't know, man. I don't know. Small surplus it is. Got some upgrade points. Um, we're we're gonna get by that level two reactor. And I guess level one launcher. 
No? Already got level 1 launcher. Can't buy level... I don't understand. I already buy those. Oh, costs expensive. Decline. Oh, they're all level one. I see it. Okay, I see it. I see it. I see it. Okay. And system map. Let's jump back over here real quick. Whoa! I remade you. I made you. What's going on here? Standard reactor. Good balance between a power put and capacitor size. I'm I'm gonna buy it because it's awesome. Standard reactor now available. Awesome. Jump in our hangers. Plop on that better reactor. Cost 11. Oh, it costs a lot to. So shouldn't have. Shouldn't have done that, I guess. But that's okay. Wow. The boost really isn't as much as I thought it would be. What? Why get my guys? Refit. Refit. Okay, I understand it's expensive, but you know what? I don't care. Do not care. Hope we get a space for a third ship. Hey, Grasshopper. Let's go kill them people up. We were not done over there. If you're a fail gun, you can always use Master Treat. You lose any current mission progress, but you could keep all the res data level ups. <laughs> so you just get to keep doing it again. Wow. Hmm. His missiles are missling. Like really bad. Stop killing my teammate, buddy, will ya? You're gonna die, bro. I'm gonna collect your copes. I'm coming, bud. You be careful over there. Because I don't think you can really do anything. I've watched you. You're kind of trash. Oh, I thought I could. All right, fine. I won't. Oh, that's kind of sad. That whole thing there. The ability for those missiles to actually land is. Surprisingly sad. Oh, oh, they can home, but they. He's got to be further away. I'm enjoying these ones a lot, though. Beams are ripping it up, dude. Let's go get that crew. We seem to be slow as molasses.
Alright, so... Grasshopper, you was trash, dog. Alright, hold on. That ship is full of garbage, man. Whoa, that guy's keeping on me. Recharging. Oh, good hole shots. I want to pick that crewman up because this guy is garbage. I'm picking up crewman. Because I'm always full. He's the guy I use. Thanks for getting those, buddy. Grasshopper is slow. So is tar, dude. Oh my gosh! Why? Why have they fighting without teammates? Alright, so you gotta take out the guys that are gonna take down your shields first. And get the other guys later. Black box. Full. Oh my gosh, is my teammate up there, like, fighting off a storm? Hole damage there. Up. Oh. This is this game surprisingly fun. Kind of want to blow that dude up. <laughs> Well, the fact that he can actually hit stuff with those missiles is a huge one, in my opinion. I don't care if you hit my shit. You ain't doing nothing to me. Aaron boy, will this be the best day of my whole life? Just like apple pie, I think we'll be done sending you on a suicide mission now, mister. Come on back to clockwork and have a drink on us. We'll have that big old turd of yours polished up in no time. I seem to be full on that ship. Hangers, let's see what we got. Because that guy is, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of him. We've got this dude. We click on that and then we click change hull and then we look at this we can compare the two 
Maneuverability goes up, cargo capacity goes down. Alright, though. Uh, boomerang is very light and therefore a maneuverable ship. Trading firepower for speed is... It is lightly armed for its class with only two forward guns. Extremely hard to hit when piloted by an expert. Is it fast? I mean, the maneuverability is the same as... That guy, we got hull strength of a third, hull mass of a third, crew capacity of a third-ish, and cargo capacity of, of also a third. Everything looks the same. I don't understand. Oh, it has armor plates. Okay. I get you. That ship ain't free. That ship ain't free. Got a standard reactor. Seriously though, that ship ain't free. Oh, hope you guys are enjoying this long episode. Uh, there's just so much chatter in it, so much talking, so much slow stuff. I can't, I can't, you know, be like, uh, we should be stopped now. So the missiles is, are f the missiles is the missiles are fine. I don't think they're. Amazing. Would I want both to have that? You know what? Ignore this. Let's go back to the way. Just, just, just leave it as it is. Just leave it as it is. Got to go into research. Oh, we got cloaking. Cloaks are mounted and shipped in place of the shields. Cloak fields do have some degree of damage, but they trade stealth for power when the ship fires. Or struck by weapons, the cloak will be disrupted for a short time. If the cloak field takes too much damage, it will collapse until it can recharge. Any in an engaged cloak field will also dampen the ship's top speed. Okay. Hull damage, okay. Armor is practically around the ship's Let's do. I mean what was it? What do we get for it? Increased health and armor damage multiplier. <laughs> But we need upgrade shields, so we can buy the shield upgrade. So let's get that. And forsake our weapons and damage and awesomeness. Oh, but I could upgrade that or I could go for the cloak. I think shields are great. I think a better shield's great. I don't think I'll be sad about that. I really don't. We'll find out. I mean, you know, we'll probably play this game in the future. I don't know how long. Crew turrets, subsystems, mines, drones, bombs. Alright, fine. Um, kind of looking into this armor thing, although hull is nice too. I don't know. <laughs> Suddenly I have choices and I don't know what to do anymore. Kind of lost. Reactor was worth it, 100%. And since we just got shields, I don't think we're going to uh, upgrade cloak. We might upgrade Armor or hull? What's hull give us? Or heck, we could do both, I suppose. Yeah, we should. We'll do both. Except. And then. Systems. And then this dude. And then buy our stuff. And then call it. I, I hate it when our guys come. Oh my gosh. You are so slow, sir. Seriously. Grasshopper. So slow. I will not be sad to have lost it. Black market catalog. Power use half. Recharge speed more. And strength more. Worth it. I will buy this tar out of this stuff, apparently. I could convert goons to res, but we're not really missing out on anything. Okay, hangers. So, this guy. Change your hull. You are going to be this awesome dude here. We are going to grab... I understand we have the shield. Power usage, strength, and recharge speed. Ships firing from cloak state do 33% bonus damage, which is nice with a weapon like a rocket launcher. <laughs> that ship on the right looks like a 
yeah, we're not gonna, yeah, it's you see it. You don't even need me to tell you. Why did they even do that? How did they not realize? They must have realized. There's no way. So have that one, and then look here, and we go. Power usage is less. Recharge speed is up, and strength is up too. Armor plates are better because we ain't no dummy. Grab this guy and go shield number two, please. Get that easy, easy re rebuild cost. No, no sadness there. I like what we're going with this. I like that they're beams. I think this guy will do okay with the pulse cannons. So pop like that. Did I? I told him to do it. Oh, right. No, refit ship. That's fine. Uh, let's pop over to home. And our guys should have been upgraded. The miners had made good on their promise. As the following weeks came and went, the clockwork slowly took shape. Many miners had joined the clockwork's crew in hopes of one day finding their fortune beyond the warp gate. Oops. Don and his crew had begun to make a name for themselves, a name that would eventually spread throughout the stars and become legend. Time had finally come to leave Earth behind and embark on the long journey to the core. I have to admit my surprise that Elsa's friends were able to patch up the clockwork in decent time. Let's hope it doesn't fly apart in the first bend. You should have more faith in these people. They took a risk lending us a hand, and we should pray we find such luck in the future. You two need to stay focused. Don't forget we almost got killed back there, and we haven't even left home yet. As long as they're willing to pay us, we can stay to build up the fleet and collect the supplies we need. Beyond that, we have no time for chivalry or to fight a losing war. Getting the hell out of here is all that matters right now. Well, it looks like these feeble repairs allow us to build much larger vessels. Oh, and I just tried to upgrade. We need to be on the lookout for black boxes. I can use them to reverse engineer new ship designs and repair our database. Maybe you should read this. We have a large hangar and two small hangars. I could update her at that. Other dude. The mother ship has been upgraded. It can now hold more ships, more cargo, more crew, and more ass. And kick more ass. I was like, I didn't, we just said hold, hold, hold. The goon cloning facility has also come back online. You will need to receive an influx of gloons every time you level. Now receive. Oh, that's silly. All right. Well, good thing I didn't. Oh, empty hangar. Give me the give me the hangers. I sure hope you're paying attention. There will be a quiz after. All but the smaller sh smaller ships have armor plating installed. Different plating types can be mounted to different quadrants of the ship depending on the size and shape shape of the ship. Oh my goodness. Some armor sections tend to take more damage than others. Each installed plate will add cost and weight to the ship. Makes sense. That's also a two. So I'm feeling that's the way to go there. Oh my gosh. There's that special ship we were talking about. <laughs> um, I feel like we should make two boomerangs and a mining vehicle which was my plan um, it only costs one more res who cares dude we'll, we'll definitely grab that I won't even be sad uh, reactor yes better reactor shields guess better shields or we could do stealth but it's going to slow him down. Frankly, I don't really want that. Also, the power usage is massive compared to this. Did you see that? Nope. Power usage is, is a lot less, apparently. I'm totally full of it. Engine? Only got one engine. That's fine. So this guy, I figure he can run around and, and mine for me while these two dudes fight up a storm. Uh, you, you're my butt. Put on your lasers. I uh, think you'll do good with a pulse cannon. Power usage is worse. Damage is a little bit better. Range is a lot worse. I think everything looks good. Scout. Alright, oh, the scout. We'll click on it, but we're not going to use a scout. And then refit, refit, build. Just 
Pew pew. We can hold a heck of a lot more guys too. Oh wait, this is my this is my mining ship. Oh look at the cargo. Holy cow. Zero fifty two. Could mine the crap out of this guy. I'll probably go do that a little bit at some point because why not? If you can, you should. All right, guys. With that, that has been an excessively, exceedingly, excessively. That's it's just a long video. Uh, I hope you don't mind. I hope you're not disappointed. I hope you didn't get bored. Uh, and let me know if you want to see more of this. I'm gonna probably play more of this because this seems pretty neat. Although my ability to move left and right here is hindered by my ability to understand what forward and and other th stuff is. It's very confusing. It's very confusing. I feel like I should turn with the uh, uh, A and the D, but it doesn't. The A and the D strafes. So. That'll take some work, is what that'll take. Turn radius is kind of interesting. But let me know if you guys want to see more of this. If you don't, let me know because, you know, so I don't show you more of this because otherwise I, I, th I think I will. This game is actually pretty entertaining. It, it, it reminds me of uh, Bubble Tanks. If you guys never played that game uh, it's free. It's a game from um, uh, Armor Games and it's a, it's a good time. It's it's worth, you know, maybe the hour or two you end up playing with it. Maybe maybe four hours if you go the whole way and want to upgrade and level up all the ships. Uh, it's pretty neat though. So check that out. Uh, if you get a chance to buy this on the cheap like I did. I believe I got this from a Humble Bundle, so <laughs> cheap. Um, so far, it seems pretty cool. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.